It's pretty rare that the mic dies and I don't catch it, but it was dead for almost this whole video, so I'm gonna have to voice over, and so is Jamie. We're gonna be putting some shelves up in this office space, and it's pretty clean and neat still after about three weeks, a month, somewhere in there that we got this done, and I'm pretty excited about putting these shelves up because we're gonna be able to see all of my cool art stuff that is normally in a drawer in baggies and totes that I never see. In our next craft kit, we're gonna be having corbels, and so a lot of people wanted to know how they could use them to hang a shelf. So we thought we would show you in our office because I wanted to do some corbel shelves anyways. The craft kit, if you want these corbels, ends January 15th, but sometimes you can find salvage and you can do them the exact same way. To make the shelves, we've just got this common board pine. It's a one by eight by eight feet long. And I've cut it in half and we're just going to use the four foot sections here to make the shelf. We couldn't decide right away if we wanted it to be a little lower or higher. We ended up going higher so that you could see the corbel. And I think this height is going to work out really well for what we need. And that gives us enough room still for the other shelf. And it'll line up with about the same height as the window sill up top once we put stuff on it. Here I'm just finding center on the wall. We decided that we wanted the shelves to be right in between the wall and the window instead of being centered on the desk or farther to one side or the other. And I'm glad we did it because it turned out really great. Here I'm countersinking the holes so that we can put the screws in and they can sit flush. My countersink is broken off and it's a little short. Just know that if you're doing this, don't do it in your room if your countersink is full length because you'll drill right into your floor. And I actually should have used a full length countersink because we run into trouble a little later and I'll show you what happens. All right, here I'm just lining it up on the wall where I made the marks. We're going six inches in from the end on each of the corbels. I've already got the screw in there where I want it to go. And then I'm just gonna screw the bottom one in first. And then there's one at an angle on the top and I'm screwing that in and then we're done. It's connected to the wall, super sturdy. If you want to, you can put these into studs or you can anchor them in with drywall anchors and they'll still be pretty strong that way too. Marking the shelves where I need to do the countersink on the top so that we have a nice flush fit and just drilling in where those are gonna go so that the shelves can secure to the corbels. Again, be careful not to drill through your floor. We decided to finish these with just tongue oil because we wanted them to match the butcher block top in the office. Just use a clean rag do a coat, it takes up to two weeks to dry cured. It's also food safe, so you're good to go if you're using it on like a charcuterie board or whatever. If you need extra durability, you can build up multiple coats and it will just give you a more durable finish. In this case, one coat is fine because we're really not even ever gonna see the top of these shelves. All right, so six inches from the end. Okay, let's make sure that this fits. All right, we are good to go. Do you want the next one to be? Is that too high up on this next one? Um, that's gonna be pretty high. <laughs> I feel like that's good because then the stuff, like if you put anything on it, it'll kind of line up with the top of the window, kind of like the one in the kitchen. Okay. Cause I might wind up doing like some artwork or something on that one, like a framed print. I don't know what, but. We didn't want to see the screws on the bottom. So I went ahead and filled them with some half inch plugs in that countersink hole. We don't send the corbels pre-drilled because some people just use them as like architectural detail or bookends. So if you're going to use them in this capacity, make sure you hold back a little teeny bit of birdie so that way you can touch up the plugs and cover up your screws. Okay, remember before when I said I was gonna show you why you wanna countersink properly? This is what happens. The head of the screw sunk down and split the wood. All right, and now it's time to show you my hoard of art supplies that I've been keeping around since I was in high school some of these things i use a ton some i don't use at all but i wanted to display them out of a drawer so that i can actually see what i have see what i need to replace because art supplies do get used up and a lot of times i'll go to use them and they'll be gone or the paint will be dried out or the pencils will be all little stubs and then i'm like well i guess i can't do that project and then i never get to it because by the time i remember to go get art supplies it's when i need to use them again and they're all dried up or used up I'm probably gonna use different organization jars for this. Might get something wide mouth that actually holds them better for today. I just ran downstairs, found some old canning jars that I had in the basement and used what I had here today. And then now I'll revisit as I can. And who knows, it might be like this six months from now cause I get busy. Zeb got everything organized neatly in jars, which was fine. And we could have just left it that way, but I like to make things cute. I looked online to see if I could find any office 
art supplies, inspiration, and nothing was similar to what we were doing. So I just went with my basic design, which is always a little chippy white, some natural wood elements and some greenery, and then move things around until the balance is right. Little pro tip, when you're decorating, take a picture when you're done, and then if things don't look quite balanced, it's easier to arrange it that way sometimes in a two-dimensional situation instead of real life. My biggest problem is that Zeb is tall and I am short, and so decorating the upper shelf was a struggle, but luckily he came in to help. For me, decorating always happens in layers, like the desk came in, I stared at the blank wall for a minute, decided I wanted shelves. The shelves are not like my dream come true as far as the way they're staged, but we just <laughs> used things we already had. Yeah, I went down into the basement and grabbed some old canning jars that we had, and we probably will get something different to put these in that fit a little better, but for now it works. It gets my art supplies where I can see them and use them instead of just being stuffed in a container inside a drawer that I never looked at. It's really important not to wait to have the perfect pieces to decorate. Chances are you have things that will work to get you inspired so that way you can hunt and search for a curated look. That's our big thing we're doing this year is it's gonna be curated, not created, so it doesn't look like something you just ordered from a catalog. If you like the paint products you saw us used here today, visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.